2006, the CDC compiled data on smoking for persons aged at least 18 years old. The table below summarizes some of the data. Find the probability that a randomly selected subject is Hispanic or a smoker. So I want to look at this carefully here. It says, um, find the probability. So I've underlined that phrase to indicate we're looking for probability. That's pretty clear. Probability that a randomly selected subject is Hispanic or a smoker. A randomly selected subject refers to just one subject being selected. That means it's one simple event, the event of grabbing one individual, right? So A randomly selected subject, that's just one subject. That's a key phrase that tells me that this could be basic probability or perhaps maybe in this case addition rule if it has the word or. And I've underlined that word as well because or is present in the problem. We think this problem is addition rule, right? So find the probability that a randomly selected subject is Hispanic or a smoker. Whenever you have the word or in the problem, or if it can be logically thought of that way, you can use addition rule to solve the problem. Okay, so we're gonna take the probability that the subject is Hispanic and add it to the probability the subject is a smoker, but then we wanna subtract anybody would have counted twice because there might be some Hispanic smokers that we might have counted twice. So if we know it's addition rule, let's start out by writing the formula for addition rule. It'd be the probability of, in this case, a Hispanic or a smoker. So H or S, I'm using as a shorthand. And if I were to write out the formula, it says we take the probability of the first one, and we add that to the probability of the second one. We subtract off the probability that we get the two things together in one individual. So in this case, it would be the Hispanic smokers. Or you could say the smokers who are also Hispanic, right? Or Hispanics who, who smoke. Anything like that that conveys the idea that you're putting these two categories together. All right, now, from there, we just have to work these out. Keep in mind that each little part of this is just a basic probability. In other words, it's a simple fraction, a fraction that will have on top, in this case, the number of Hispanics divided by the total. This one will be the number of smokers divided by the total. And this one will be the number of Hispanic smokers divided by the total. So again, for each one, it's the same pattern as before. Number of, in this case, number of Hispanics. This one will be number of smokers. And this one will be number of Hispanic smokers. And each of those will be over a total. In fact, because the addition rule involves a single event in its most basic form, all these denominators will be the same because we're only going to be selecting one item. So the total before we go in will always be the same for each fraction. So we're not going to have to make any adjustment if it's just pure basic probability and you're only selecting a subject, one subject. Okay, so we should be able to fill this in now, right? Because we have the logic written out for each fraction. So I need the number of Hispanics total. Well, when I look at the table, I can figure that out, right? Hispanics is this column, and the total here is 360. So I should put 360 there for the number of Hispanics. The grand total is the 3,000. There are 3,000 people in this study. That's the total number of people involved. So I'll put that as my denominator. And in fact, because as I said before, each fraction has the same denominator in addition rule whenever you're grabbing just one subject, then I can keep that 3,000 straight across. I don't have to worry about that anymore. All right, now let's try to identify the number of smokers in the problem. Well, here's the smoker column. The total is here. Total number of smokers is 637. So we'll put 637 there. And then lastly, we need the number of Hispanic smokers. Well, this is an intersection of these two categories. It's a merging of the two categories. But the idea of an intersection works nicely with a table because if you thought of this as a road, the smoker road, let's say, and you thought of this as the Hispanic road, right? then there'd be some intersection point, right? A place where they crisscross. The cell where they crisscross is exactly the place where the Hispanic smokers reside, right? So let's see, the Hispanics who smoke, that number is 55, and that occurs right at the intersection of my two lines, right? Okay, so 
55 people in the study would have been counted twice because they would have been counted once for being Hispanic and then again for being smokers. So we have to subtract them off so that we don't have a double counting effect there. All right, and then just, you know, type in the numbers. So 360 plus 637 minus 55. Putting all the numerators together, we end up with the result 942 over 3000. And then at that point, we simply divide to get our final answer. And our decimal result then is 0 0.314 exactly, so that's 31.4%. Okay, and that's it. So when you look here, you say, um, from this study in 2006, the probability that a randomly selected uh, subject is either Hispanic or a smoker is about 31.4% of the population, at least the population involved in this group, right?